Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, a professor at Johnson County Community College. I work in the Web Development and Digital Media Program, which is a subset of our Computing Sciences and Information Technology Division. And in this series of screencasts, we're going to talk about math and JavaScript and how everything you learn in math class applies to every programming language you're going to learn. The problem, however, is that the programming language may have additional meaning to certain math symbols and operations, and so that can be confusing. So we're going to try to break that down and highlight those differences and additional meanings so that you can just learn your programming language faster. So this is the little web page that we're going to be using for this series of screencasts, and there's not a lot of content on here. And if you're in Web 110, HTML and CSS, you will recognize this code that created this page already. If you're in our Web 114 class, which is JavaScript 1, you would recognize the JavaScript already. But don't worry about the code too much. I'm going to break that down in the screencast, and then you'll have that background for what we're really trying to do, and that is highlight the differences between the symbols in the math class and the symbols as they're used in JavaScript. So let's just talk about this HTML and CSS real quickly. So we're starting out with our doc type HTML. So that means we're going to be using HTML5, and then we surround our entire page with the HTML tags and specify what language we're going to be using, in this case, English. Of course, we have the head and the body section. The head section's the information about the page. The title tags explains the character encoding. And then I have a little tiny embedded style sheet here where I'm just putting some margin around paragraphs, labels, inputs, and selects so that I've got a little bit of space around my elements over here. We know that if we were really building a website, we would not use an embedded style sheet like this. We would pull our styles out into an external style sheet so that we could apply those styles to many pages. But for convenience sake, I just went ahead and put my style sheet right here in the head section. In my body section, I've got my H1 tags, math and JavaScript, and then a label and an input box for each of these numbers. The label number one and the input box go together, and I've got two of those for label number one, input box number one, label number two, and input box number two. The interesting thing about the label and the input elements is that the for attribute of the label needs to match the ID attribute value of the input box for accessibility reasons. So that if someone's using a screen reader to read this web page, when they tab or click in this box, the screen reader will know what label goes with that input box. On the input box, I've got it typed as number with a minimum and maximum of 10, and that creates this little spinner control here that goes up and down between 0 and 10. If I had typed my input box as text, I could also put numbers in there, but I could also put then uh, any other character. So I'm going to go back to number, which will limit my ability from a user input standpoint to only put in numbers. I cannot type in my name or any textual character there if I have the input box typed as number. Number two is exactly the same. They're ID, they're uniquely identified as number one and number two. So this is number one and this is number two. These tags create this drop-down list. The select and option tags create this, the drop-down list. And the text in between the opening and closing option tags are the text that you see on the drop-down list here. When I speak to this section with my JavaScript, I will be reading the value attribute of these options and pulling that into my code. But we'll get to that much later. The button element is this calculate button and the paragraph is where the answer is going to go. And all my JavaScript is going to handle these inputs, read number one, read number two, read my operation, and then fire some code when I click the Calculate button to change this paragraph text. And let's just try it. Let's say 10 and 2, and let's subtract them, calculate, that's correct answer, multiply them, that's a correct answer, and then divide them, and that's a correct answer. But watch what happens when I add them. I get... 102 instead of what we would have expected, which is 12. And there's where our math and our JavaScript tend to break down. I will explain why this is happening and how to fix it in the next screencast. Thank you.